Hello and welcome, it's Bushwhacker here, and welcome to another Stationeers tutorial. On today's episode, we are upgrading our atmospheric system. As you guys can see, we're going to add some consoles to be able to see the pressure and the temperature of our system. And I'm also going to show you some different ways of filling it up. Let's go ahead and get started. For this build today, we're going to need 12 kit consoles. Um, if you just want to display pressure, you can just use 6, but I'm going to display temperature and pressure for each of the tanks. We're going to need some cable coil, we're going to need 12 gas displays, and we're going to need some glass sheets. One other important that we're gonna, item that we're going to need is a labeler. So we'll grab a labeler here and a battery for it. It's very important when you're doing this to label everything nicely. So that's what we'll do uh, from the start here. So I like keeping the name filtration and then this gas is named X or that's how it shows up. And then H2O. We have this is hydrogen so this will just be H. This is oxygen. This is carbon dioxide and nitrogen. It's also important to label your tanks. So this will be nitrogen, carbon dioxide, pretty much just doing the same thing. Just make sure that you have these tanks labeled correctly because that will be pretty important later. H2O and finally pollutants or X okay and I'm, gonna fix, I'm just gonna change this to uh, a little X there we go and we will need to label her later but I'll put it down for now we can start grabbing our consoles and the way I like to do this um, is to put the displays right over the uh, filters here now you can put them back on the wall I think sometimes that's a little harder to see. This isn't necessarily the best looking ever, but uh, when you walk up to one of these, you know exactly uh, which uh, tank it's talking about. And we can label them later, but for now, we'll use these. So if you use these console monitors, it allows you to place them while they're floating. So that's what we'll use. And a couple more console monitors. And now we need to start throwing all these gas displays in. Now this is going to take a second, so uh, I'll just pop back when I'm done. Okay, and now I'm back. I put all these gas displays in. And last but not least, we have to put the glass over it. Make sure that we hold it down all the way. And uh, one other thing that I forgot that I will be sure to grab here is the data disk because we're going to have to program all of these. Okay, so, I'll, uh, but before we can program them, we're going to need to wire them up first. So I'm going to just turn on my jetpack and we'll start to wire them. So uh, we want to make sure that it's connected to this network here. So we'll make one of them a three way corner. And we'll make the other one just a corner. And then, yeah, we can come just straight down and connect up to our wiring down here. And let's see, I'll need my cable cutters, which I threw over here the last time. And we'll connect into here. Yeah, let's use a four way corner. There we go. And then we should be able to turn these on, which you can. And obviously, it doesn't know which tank to go to yet. We're going to have to program that up later. Uh, but again, I'll just wire all of these up just like I did these two. And I will be back when I am done. And I am back. Now, I've got all these wired up just like that first one. And they are ready to go. So the next step is we're going to take our labeler 
and labeling these isn't required, but I like doing it. Uh, when you label them, uh, it will uh, show up on the screen. So it just makes it look better. So I'll just, uh, I'm just gonna label these like O2 pressure and you can see it shows up on that screen there. So O2, let's see, O2 temp, except it would be nice if that was actually O2. This is actually nitrogen. So nitrogen pressure, nitrogen temp. Nope, I just took a screenshot there. And uh, yeah, we'll just do this for the rest of these. Pressure, CO2 temp. And this just makes it uh, really nice when you look at them. When you go to rename them with the data disk, it makes it uh, way easier as well, just to kind of keep track of everything. And for any reason, if you, uh, which one, let's see, we started with pressure. And if you wanted to uh, do any logic, uh, then it, it would be easier to find exactly which one you're looking for. And we just have water and pollutants left. It looks like my jetpack is moving me forward for some reason. H two O temp. And finally, we have our pollutants. So I'll just name it X. And you can name this X or pollutants or whatever you want. There we go. So now all of them are named, so pressure and temp and we can finally throw down our labeler. Uh, now we'll grab our data disk, throw that on the ground, and we can insert it into our first console here. So then we're gonna have to sort through a lot of these, but on the left we'll have pressure, so we wanna make sure mode is pressure, and this is uh, for the small tank. And then we can go over here and we can go small tank N again, and we can do temperature. And there we go, it shows us our temperature and our pressure. Uh, again, I'm just gonna have to repeat this for the rest of these. So I'll come back when I've done that. Okay, and I'm back. You can see all these now have temperature and pressure. So. Uh, you can see that the ones uh, that actually do have pressure in them, you can see the pressure and temperature. Now obviously if there's no pressure, that means there cannot be a temperature. So that's why it reads with that little line for now. And you can see that these are displaying quite nicely. Uh, quite interesting that uh, some of the tanks, although the pressures are fairly similar, the temperatures are way different. Looks like uh, water is going to hold on to its heat a lot more than these other ones will. So now that we have these uh, displays, let's go ahead and let's fill them up with some stuff. So uh, one way that you can do this is uh, if you have a tank. So we'll take a tank, can, a gas tank storage. So we'll put this, we're gonna put this right here. And we'll put a valve. I don't think I'm gonna be able to attach this directly to it, no. So I'll put a valve here, and we'll actually move this guy. I'll get rid of these, because I don't need them anymore. Looks like, what, do I need a wrench? Okay. So get rid of that. I'll throw down this here. Luckily I have a little pipe left over. So I'm going to throw down this corner here. So uh, now we want to connect up this piece, so I will grab uh, T junction here and in order to connect this up right away we can put this here and we can just press C and that will automatically align it. Now it's not perfect when connecting things but it definitely helps a lot. Um, let's go ahead and we're also gonna connect this pipe or connect a valve here. Of course I got rid of the pipe or the uh, valve so I need to get some more. 
but that's no problem. And we will face it this way. And we don't need those anymore. Famous last words. Okay, and now we have our system hooked up. So there are a couple ways that you can fill uh, these. One, like I said before, is you could put a passive or an active vent outside and you could just let it uh, filter the air from the atmosphere. This is gonna be extremely effective because you don't have to mine anything, it'll do it all itself. You just need to be careful that these tanks can overpressurize. Uh, once the tanks get to a, around 50 megapascals, uh, they can definitely explode. Uh, but actually, it would be this piping that would explode. I don't know when the tanks explode because Really, you can't get this pipe to high enough pressure before it explodes for the tank to explode. Pretty sure I just said explode like a hundred times there, but that's okay. So if you're lazy and for whatever reason you don't want your fuel anymore, so you can take your canister fuel and place it in here and you can open this up. And we can come over here and look, we're, we got some hydrogen. And it shouldn't take very long for this entire tank to drain, which is already empty. Yeah, and you can see that it's already done, really uh, draining all that pressure. The temperature is going to decrease. Apparently, the temperature in the tank was higher. So that'll decrease until it gets to room temperature. We can throw this welding torch down for now. Um, also, uh, what we can do is we can smelt some... Uh, let's smelt some iron. Now I'm gonna mix my mix outside because I do not want this system exploding. So we'll go outside, we'll, my, we'll get some volatiles. Let's see. And we can split these, let's just split. Let's just split four of them. So, and we'll let those go into oblivion. Uh, so we got four of those. We'll need our mining belt for this, so let's switch to that. So, and then we'll take two oxide. So, item oxide, and we'll split two of these off. And again, that can go off into oblivion, or it probably will end up circling around. Actually, look, it just dissipates in the in space. So, okay, that works. So now we have our mixture. Let's grab some gold to smelt. So grab some gold ore. You know what, that's, we can smelt some electrum maybe. So we'll do silver. Is that right? Yeah, that, that's exactly what I want. So we'll grab our silver ore and we'll throw 50 of that in here. We can go back into our base. Close off our doors here. There should be like elevator music in here or something because luckily it doesn't actually take all that long to pressurize. And look at all the particles fly around. So what we'll do is let's turn this off and we wanna make sure our furnace is off just like in my other furnace videos. And again, this is definitely not uh, the right way. Well, actually this is probably is the right way to smelt 100 Electrum. But if you wanna watch a better video on that, uh, I'll leave a card right now. Definitely go ahead and watch that. It um, explains uh, smelting way more in depth. So I'm just gonna hold my Alt key and I'll throw these volatiles in there. And it's not warm enough, so I'm just gonna melt them. There you go. And I can throw my Oxide in there. And get ready for some fire. Okay. And it's warming up, so it's pushing me away, but I can throw my gold in there. We'll let the gold melt. And we'll grab our silver in our hand and let that melt in there. And that's creating, so when you create something like this, it will um, uh, create other gases other than just the um, oxide and the uh, volatiles that you put in there. So it'll, it should create more than just oxygen and hydrogen. Now this hasn't been showing up for me. Oh, no, that's because it's not ready yet. I'm gonna say the pressure is probably too high. It's melting down again. Let's, oh no, close the door. Okay, let's see if we can actually do this right here. And, oh yeah, the temperature doesn't seem very high. 
Maybe that's my issue. I don't know. Let's drain a little bit of the pressure out of here, how about? So we can open this up now. Uh, if you're doing this uh, while connected to a filtration system, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you have some system to cool these gases because this is gonna be some very, very, very hot air that is gonna go into your system. So we'll let it cool down for just a second and I'll just cut to then because I don't want to accidentally create more problems in my system here. Okay, we're back in. We're at about 800, or sorry, 580 uh, t for our temperature. Now that's definitely a bit too high to be put into this filter system normally, but uh, for now it'll be okay. It'll end up cooling off when it's in the tank. Now it looks like we put too much oxide and volatiles into the furnace because our pressure just went way too high uh, for that and now the temperature is too low. So let's go ahead and open up our valve here and we can watch on these screens and we can see that we are creating some pollutants. Looks like we have some hydrogen. Now the pressures are going to be quite high because the temperature is so high. We also have some oxygen that was created some CO2 it looks like and nitrogen just might be increasing because of the temperature uh, yeah so uh, let's let this drain guys uh, this is pretty much it this is how you would fill your system uh, you can either use again the furnace you can use your tanks and drain them or you can like I said have a passive or active vent going out to the atmosphere to collect your gases um, this is part two of my atmosphere series and I'm going to definitely have several more videos. But if you guys like this video, please go ahead and leave it a like. If you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and leave those below. Again, thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll see you again next time. Bushwhacker out.